So while I was gathering material for a different Doctor Who segment, I came across all these drawings, if you can even call my terrible chicken scratches drawings, that I had done to explain the design of the castle tower in Heaven Sent. The funny thing about these drawings is that they're all of the same thing. They're all me explaining how the central corridor works, and they're all over my Heaven Sent binder. They're scratched on the back pages in the script, they're in the corner of things. I just went looking for designer Michael Pickwood's proper drawing and came across three, yeah, three more of my chicken scratches. And funnily enough, Michael never actually did a simple sketch. Not the genius Michael sits down and sketches this on a napkin within 12 seconds, something absolutely amazing. So I decided to showcase these in an episode, how we designed the Clockwork Castle in Heaven Sent. A few years ago, I did this post on my Tumblr page. Remember Tumblr? When it was relevant? When they were relevant? And I took the opening page of Stephen Moffat's script and posed some questions about how one might think about the design ideas on that page. So this chapter is less about a specific shot and more about the creativity and the practicality of pinning down the design of a complicated idea. The concept behind the Clockwork Castle was quite hard to put into words. And there were a lot of ideas in the opening of the script that were confusing to the crew. And it was my job, of course, to try and help everyone understand what Stephen Moffat wanted. Adding to that was the bigger question, which looms over almost all filmmaking. What could we actually afford to build? What could we have locations could we afford? What did we need to do practically? And particularly, how many visual effects shots could we do? This episode was supposed to be a less expensive one. Stephen had originally conceived of it as the Doctor alone with the Weeping Angels in a haunted house. No new monster and no clockwork castle. As he worked on the script, his ideas evolved and the results are genius, but not exactly the less expensive episode that they had been hoping for. I bring up Peter Bennett, the day-to-day -day practical producer on my episodes of Who, because he and I worked really closely on the practical problems of solving what we do within the budget. He's an absolute genius at coming up with these ideas on how to do things. I remember phoning him after I read the first 10 pages of the script and saying, well, um, that's the entire budget. What do we do now? And he just said, well, we're going to figure it out, which we did. But it was a confounding puzzle box. It's a killer puzzle box designed to scare me to death. And I'm trapped inside it. <laughs> Must be Christmas. Remember that while I'm prepping this episode, the show is still shooting other episodes. In this case, Face the Raven was in production, so Michael Pickwood had to design this whole new world while he's completing the actual sets for the episode that they're shooting. There's a whole lot more to say about the location scouting and the conceptual ideas we had for this and other episodes, but in the meantime, I'm just going to concentrate on the castle. So this is the castle as I drew it. This is drawing number one. To understand this better, let's go through the relevant script material. I'm going to read some some of the pieces to you and talk about where we went with each of the descriptions. So it starts with Spires and Tower, an ancient sprawling castle. Okay, well, that's not too daunting. Michael Pickwood used Pierre Font for inspiration, the fairy tale storybook over the top nature of it. We also location scouted some of the local castles. Uh, and I can't tell you how amazing that is. Life is rough when your day job is wandering through castles and being led into areas that say no public. A lot of the Welsh castles are ruins. Your history will explain that. I loved visiting Castle C-O-C-H. I'm not going to butcher the name pronunciation. I was laughed at enough about that. I loved Raglan, but it was not appropriate because it was such a ruin. I'd love to do a horror film there. And here's Michael Pickwood location scanning it with me. So back to the script. Looking at sunrise through a row of windows in an ancient stone wall. Time-lapse photography as the sun moves in the sky, the sunbeams sweeping round the room like searchlights. Okay, is this going to be practical or is it a visual effect? Now cutting round various different locations as in the sprawling castle world. Colonnades and chambers and fountains and libraries, all in ancient dusty stone. Moving closer over details. So one thing we decided was that these details could be still frames rather than movie frames, and we spent a couple of hours, amazing hours, in Cardiff Castle, where Stuart Biddlecombe shot all these incredible detailed shots, and I have this massive folder of them that would make the most beautiful book. So here's a few tidbits for, for you. It was my birthday, um, because I know that we went to Yo Sushi for lunch, and then we tried to have ice cream at a nitrous place, but sadly it was closed, but still it rocked. Stuart's eye is amazing. 
here's a picture of him shooting the stills. And now we come to the description of the circular corridor, which is what we've been waiting for. A corridor encircles the circular chamber. Four corridors, at regular intervals, give off radially from the circle. They are labeled north, south, east, and west. So that's your real clue. It's either can be seen as a compass or the spokes of a wheel. But that's buried in so much else going on in the script as it continues. There are windows there, too. He's clearly in a tower. The doctor steps to one of the windows, a very high tower and encircled by another much larger building, 50 feet away, a rearing gray cliff face of windows. Well, okay, so what? Um, still not sure what Stephen was envisioning here. Uh, we certainly didn't follow that direction. I hope he's okay about it. There are walkways connecting this tower to the surrounding castle. These are the corridors we already saw. The doctor looks down. The building is huge, falls away into the mist. He looks up. The sky above is coppery, like a sunset. Maybe he should have taken away some clues from the coppery, because of course we are... Now, I'm about to give a spoiler in case you haven't watched this episode. Skip forward 15 seconds if you haven't seen it. Otherwise, here's the spoiler, because we are inside the confession dial. But I'm not smart, savvy enough to think that of that when I see the description coppery sky. So really simple, practical questions I had to start answering. How tall was the tower? How big was the castle? Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Um, sounds huge. What does that mean? So little panic. We get another clue uh, in the corridor outside the bedroom when the doctor has no escape from the veil. And he looks out the side window and he says, hundreds of feet up. Okay, hundreds of feet, that's massive. And that's about all the detail of the overview we get. A lot happens in the circular corridor and the veil chases the doctor around it and the doctor plays hide and seek games. And that's incredibly complicated. Um, how to show the hide and seek in basically an identical round set. You might be surprised or you might not be, how hard it is to show direction in a circular corridor. You never really know where you are. The doctor then chases down one of the radial arms and is stopped by the wooden door that won't open. The veil approaches and there's seemingly no escape. And then we get our first complicated surprise. The doctor tells the truth and the castle walls move. So let's get into the details. The first thing I had to draw and explain was the radial arms off the circular corridor around the teleport chamber within the tower that was hundreds of feet tall. And I did this drawing uh, tons of times. So here are four or five of the drawings in various stages of coffee stains. And here is Michael Pickwode's quick sketch of the exterior of it, and boy does it help. Then came the questions, how do the radial arms move? Are they attached to each floor and the center corridor is fixed? Is there an outer ring? Is there an inner ring? Uh, when the wall moves and reveals the bedroom, did the bedroom slide into place or did the wall just move? So at this point, it became more of a visual effects dilemma than a practical set one. So the first priority was what sets are we building, what locations can we find, and how do we do this practically. But this gives you kind of a feel for the conundrum that we were going through in terms of having people try and understand how it all worked. It was too expensive to build everything, so we went looking for some locations, and it seemed like it would be not that difficult to find the bedroom uh, at a castle. The rooms in Care Philly Castle were difficult. They were up uh, circular staircases, and the doctor needed to be able to jump out the window. Uh, so that would be really difficult to rig from a tower. And if it hadn't been important for the doctor to see the veil coming for him down the corridor, we might have been able to do it in one of the rooms at St. Donuts. But it would have been a really difficult cheat, and I really wanted to be able to play with focus. And there were a lot of discussions of using green screens in the door. But I fought that because it made the shooting more difficult and also because of the cost of adding visual effects. And I'm experienced enough to know that if you leave things for visual effects in post, some goddamn fiscally responsible person might look at your edit and say, you know, you don't really need that. And then they're right, but it might be something that's really wonderful and you really want and you can't really fight for it. So I fought really, really hard for us to be able to have the bedroom and the spoke and the hallway as one piece. So basically what we needed was the circular corridor, the teleport chamber, and the spokes. And what did we end up building? Well, just one of the spokes. That was the key to saving money. The bedroom was at the end of it with the movable wall, and here are the plans for it. 
there's a lot more to explain, but that's all you get for now, except for this bonus, because I went back and I found an early edit of the episode. And here's our first presentation of the opening. As you come into this room, something else is also born. You begin your life, and it begins a journey. Thank you for listening to this one. Please give comments below uh, what's working, what isn't. And, of course, like and subscribe, please. Thank you.